Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to be making a character called Bad Milo. I'll tell you more about him in a bit. But first I've got this piece of wood and I'm going to end up sawing this down to make a base later on and add a bit at the back and a bit at the front to make it a bit wider. I've drilled a couple of holes in here and a couple of holes in the other side uh, just using this little drill vise. And then I've just put some aluminium wire in and I've super glued it in place. And then I've just twisted the wire up and this is how I create an armature. So this wire armature is going to be inside of my sculpt and then I'll mould over the top of this and, you know, make all the form of the character afterwards. This is all 2mm aluminium wire, which is really easy to bend and really easy to twist. So it means that you can make really strong sections like in the middle here and across uh, his sort of neck and then his arms. And it just means that this just strengthens the overall figure. Another handy thing with the aluminium wire is that obviously you can change the shape of it as you go along. So like if I wanted to make his arms bend a little bit more or his legs bend in a different way, I can manipulate this quite a bit even at this stage. It's also a really good way of getting the overall proportions of your figure and getting them pretty accurate to start with before you even start bulking it out. So my next stage in this process is to bulk out the whole figure using crumpled up aluminium foil. This is great because it means you can form things like muscles, you know, thickness of the arms. You can get the overall shape of the head in there, overall shape of the body. Um, some of that can be quite loosely pressed, but most of it is quite firmly pressed um, so that it's nice and dense. And I'll be doing layers of paper mache over the top of this. So yeah, this character Bad Milo is from a movie with the same name, Bad Milo, and it's a sort of a horror comedy spoof. It's quite funny, I really liked it, but it might not be everybody's cup of tea. It's basically about this character who lives inside somebody's colon and uh, he sort of crawls out of the guy's bottom at night and wreaks havoc and then uh, crawls back into his bottom afterwards. Uh, you don't see that, luckily. <laughs> it's not it's not that graphic, but uh, it's uh, it's all implied. Uh, worth watching, definitely worth watching if you're into kind of creature feature movies like I am. Um, incidentally, I've made another frame here, and that's going to be for a second head because I want to have one cute bad Milo, because he is quite a cute character for a lot of the time and then I want to have one really bad looking bad Milo with a sort of uh, evil face. Right my next step was to paper mache over the top of the whole figure. This technique is one that I use a lot so I take bits of kitchen paper and I tear off kind of oval shapes into the kitchen paper. So I do about I don't know 12 or 14 sheets at a time so I've got lots of these oval shapes. And the reason I do that is because I don't want any straight edges on my kitchen paper. And then I just put um, flooring PVA glue onto my character, paint it on, and then I put the kitchen paper over the top, and then I paint the glue over the top of the kitchen paper as well, and just keep building up layers. So I probably did about three layers over him. Uh, and then you can see what I started doing is building up over the top of this using Milliput. Now I'm actually using metallic milliput because I ran out of standard milliput but it doesn't matter because it's all going to be painted at the end. It does seem a bit of a waste of the metallic milliput which is a new product, it's really cool. But um, he should look good in silver anyway. You'll be able to see that when he's all done completely in silver before I paint him. Here you can see that I've sawed his head off and then I've put a tube down into his body and I just made that out of long uh, sort of bamboo skewers all glued together with some duct tape around the edge of it. And I've glued it all in place to make a real solid kind of tube. And then this is just a wooden piece of dowel that fits in nice and snug so his head can be removed. This means I can put either his cute head on, which is this one that I'm making now. Um, I've got to put another flap under his chin there to hide that gap. Uh, but that's okay because he does have that flap in the movie as well. And then uh, I've got to make a scarier head as well. So here you can see I've used the 
metallic milliput to make all his kind of folds of skin, his eyebrows, and all this kind of detailing. Um, if you have never used milliput before, it's a two-part putty, and you mix the two parts together in equal amounts, and it sets rock hard at room temperature in about four hours. All of the folds of skin are quite easy to make, really, because you just sort of start, say, at the bottom of one arm, you put one fold of skin on and then you put another one over the top and another one over the top and you keep building them up and you just work your way upwards. Same with the legs, you just go up. You can see I've done some toes here as well. That also helps stick into the board that he's on. And I've done some fingers. These are quite rough. I've put some fingernails on, but um, when I paint these, I'll be able to kind of refine it at the painting stage. I've also got a load of these teeth that are left over from another sculpt that I did. Um, I think it was my uh, alien chest burster. Um, so yeah, I've got a whole load of those that I can use for his evil head. But it's just nice to be able to remove this one and then I'll build the other head and put it on separately. He does weigh quite a bit at this stage already and uh, that's okay though. I don't mind them weighing a little bit. What's quite nice about the head is you can also lift it up and you can uh, reposition it as if he's looking sort of a bit left or a bit right. So I quite like that, that he's like slightly um, poseable. Right, I'll show you how his head was getting on at this stage, his second head. You can see I just made the eyes. By the way, both of the um, sets of eyes for this, what I did was take some aluminium foil, scrunch it into a ball, and then add the milliput over the top roll it in my hands and then I would put it down on some aluminium foil, let it dry partly and then keep rolling it some more until they were dead smooth. Then I cut them in half uh, to create the domes for the eyes. Okay, you can see here for his evil head, I basically put some milliput on to form the gums and then I just pushed the teeth up into the gums or down into the gums for the lower jaw and then you can see the lower jaw is attached on wires and again I've just made a couple of holes and super glued the wires into his head and then I've done a couple of holes here as well for this wire for his bottom jaw to widen that later and I can use those as supports for adding more milliput to. Same with his upper lip. You can see that I repeated the process that I did on his previous eyes around these eyes just to form those kind of rims. They actually change shape because he looks more angry so he needs more added to them. But it's a good way of kind of starting it off. It was quite a quick process to do that. So I thought I might as well and then I can change it later. Another key feature to make something look angry is to make sure that his eyebrows are angled. You can see here they're not. And then all of a sudden, there. If you add a little bit to angle the eyebrows, suddenly you get a real angry look to the eyes. Whether you're doing like a cartoon drawing or a sculpt like this. Um, you can see also with his eyelids, I've made those look like they're angling inwards. And I've added a little bit on the lower eyelids as well. Just to make the eyes kind of look like they're angled as well. Right, you can see I've added the lips. Um, that's a whole load of kind of milliput uh, sausages, if you like, rolls of milliput added on. You can see on the other head I've added his little chin flaps as well to hide the gap. Um, that will look really cool when it's on the body. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you because we're pretty much ready for painting now at this stage and the painting is going to make him look so much more like Bad Milo. This is always my kind of favourite stage of a sculpt really, when the whole sculpt is done and it's ready for painting. But you can see what he looks like here in this new milliput metallic. Very cool, very silvery looking and uh, yeah, just really nice. I could have left him like this but I really wanted to paint him. Right, you can see from my base coats on both heads and the main overall body, I've used this flesh colour and literally just coated the whole thing in all of the little gaps and everything. Um, for his eyes and inside his mouth, I've just painted them flat black. Um, I'll end up lacquering the eyes to give them a good shine. But uh, yeah, everything else, this is just a base coat of flesh. If you haven't made flesh colour before, a good way of doing it is with yellow ochre paint. And then you just mix a tiny bit of red in with it, like a really small amount, and some white as well. And that gives you your base flesh colour. 
I wanted it to be quite a dark flesh and then I can add lighter flesh colours over the top using a dry brush technique. Right, I was just going to do this uh, silly little thing so you can see his mouth opening and closing. I thought that works quite well so I couldn't resist putting that in. Right, this is what he looks like after a bit of dry brushing with lighter flesh colours. So all you do, mix up your light flesh colour literally just by adding white to your original flesh colour. And then what I've been doing is uh, rubbing my paintbrush on kitchen paper until the brush is almost dry. Hardly any paint on it at all. And then you basically just dust it over all of the top surfaces of the, uh, you know, like the higher raised areas of your figure. And that makes it look like the light is hitting all of those high up places. It's a really easy technique to do and really effective. It's a bit like um, airbrushing, but without having to go through all the hassle of setting up your airbrush and cleaning your airbrush and getting it to flow properly and all that sort of stuff. Dry brushing gives a similar sort of result. So at this stage, there's a few more steps to go. And the first is to lacquer the eyes so they're really nice and shiny. I need to do another coat of black actually on the eyes before I do lacquer them. Okay, this is with the eyes with more black on and lacquered. And you can see it gives a real nice shine to them. So they kind of pop a little bit more. Um, also, I really wanted to paint like the gums and things on the evil looking head. But I'll show you that separately. I've also gone in and I've added like a sort of a slightly redder um, pink sort of uh, pinkish orange, I would say for some of the sort of darker areas, so like the fingertips, uh, on the tips of the toes, and then a few bits on certain sections, like um, sort of in between his legs, under his uh, cheeks, and that sort of thing. Just little kind of low light bits. Again, just dusted on dry brush, and uh, I think that makes all the difference. It just gives him a little bit more colour overall. You can see his evil head here. I've added a lot more blood and things. <laughs> like little blood effects and yeah it just makes him look a little bit more gory you can see i've painted all the gums in this really cool kind of pink color and then i've um flowed some kind of really wet dark sort of maroon colored paint in there as well so that sort of trickles into all of the gaps and things in his gums makes all the difference and also on his teeth i painted them um, yellow ochre to start with and then white to make those kind of pop a little bit as well. I think overall I actually prefer his cute head, but that's just because I preferred him when he was cute in the movie, because he looks all sort of sweet and innocent, but obviously he isn't at all. Right, I like with the evil head as well though, that you can kind of pick it up and you can turn it to one side so he can be positioned as if he's looking one way, or you can turn it to the other direction as well. Again, it's really nice to be able to have like a slightly poseable figure, even if it's not doing very much at all. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I definitely urge you all to go out and watch Bad Milo. It's, like I say, quite a quirky movie. Um, thanks for watching this anyway. Get out and buy yourself some Milliput if you haven't tried it already. It's a great product. And hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I post up in the future. You can see obviously I ended up painting the base on this as well. I also painted the whole figure and the base with a coating of PVA glue at the end. It just protects the whole thing, protects all the paint, stops it from scraping off. And uh, yes, just a good way of lacquering it, gives it a bit of a shine as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.